In this video getting started with SimHub, if you want to add extra peripherals or lights or dials or buttons to your Sim setup, you've come to the right place. So I'm going to add some analog dials onto my SimHub rig, so it'll have rev counter, speedo, uh, boost pressure and maybe oil gauge which go up and down like what they do in a traditional uh, car. And to do that I'm going to use SimHub. So SimHub is sort of the glue in between your game and whatever you're trying to add onto it. Uh, the beauty of it is you can use any Arduino you want. And I know I've said in the past, if you want to connect up peripherals or pedals or steering wheels to your computer, you're going to have to use a particular type of Arduino because it's got the right USB stuff inside it. Uh, and that's fine if you just want to plug that directly into any computer. It'll just work. So for the pedals I made, if I want to plug it into any computer, I can just plug it in and it'll work. Uh, but if I use SimHub, I can got the benefit of using any Arduino I want, but I need to configure SimHub on each computer I'm going to. What we'll do, we'll just get started. Uh, the SimHub install software is free, free to use, it's the perfect price, and it'll be in the show notes. So if you want to follow along, pause the video, go and install it, and then come back, and we'll just go over some basics just to get you up and running. So if you've got it installed, this is kind of what it looks like. Um, it looks pretty daunting to start with, but we're just going to go with some real basic stuff here so you've got some sense of achievement. Now down the left hand side we've got our menu options, we want to click on Arduino because that's what we're going to be working with in this video. And then it might or not already be selected but we've got my hardware on the right here and then open Arduino setup tool. So we'll click on that. It'll come up with this dialog to reload your last settings will start from scratch. We're going to start from scratch. Everything looks like it would do if you were trying to do this yourself. And here we have the uh, config for Arduino. On the right hand side here we've got the device that we've, we can use. Uh, as I say we're not limited to Leonardo and Promicro anymore. We've got all these other ones we can use and, and probably more. Uh, but for, for now this is a controller I've got so I'll just leave it with that and each pin has got a number next to it for what it's assigned to do and on the left hand side here we've got all the some pre-programmed things we can configure to add to the Arduino so I want to add a speedo and a taco as well as a couple other gauges and if I scroll down here we can see We've got these sort of already set up. So we've got an aftermarket taco, speedo, and boost gauge, temperature gauge, fuel gauge. Now that's fine. So if I click this here now, and this one, we'll see over on the right hand side we've got some extra option turn up, speedo signal, tachometer signal. So on pin 9 and pin 4 of the Arduino, if we were to go down to the car spare shop and buy off the shelf a speedo and a taco, and connect it up to this, it would work straight away. That's the end of the video. We've won, right? But not quite. Because uh, on the games I've been playing, or well, my son's been playing, the rev counter goes up to 12,000 RPM and the speed it goes up to 300 or 400 kilometers. And you're not going to find that down at your local, well, I don't find it down at my local speed shop, so you, you probably find it quite hard to find as well. If you wanted a custom looking layout, um, you got it's not really going to work with us too well so we've got a couple options we can achieve to make our own sort of gauges so what we want to do is we want to convert that signal into something that Arduino can understand and then that'll turn motors and dials to make everything work here are our options SimHub will send out a signal for the taco we'll just look at the taco for now and it's between 0 and 300 Hertz and of course the higher the Hertz the higher the revs that are being um, detected. And what we could do is we could do, you know, convert that frequency into steps to turn a step motor to match up to whatever the rev range is. So frequency goes up and the motor turns further around to represent the amount of revs. And I've tried that and it doesn't sort of really work. What happens is the Arduino is sampling and while it's sampling it's pausing on the code I was using and it would go it could go like this and it wouldn't look very sort of smooth at all. Perhaps there's another way of doing it which is a bit better but it just didn't seem that great. 
a way to do it. So the other thing we could do is we could convert that uh, signal into a voltage somehow before it gets to the Arduino because the Arduino would be much more efficient in measuring an analog voltage coming in and out rather than trying to count pulses um, from the signal from the um, Arduino. And it's relatively easily done with a chip called the LM2917. It's been around for donkey's years and its job in life is exactly that, to convert pulses into output voltage for, for speedos or, or tachometers. Uh, the problem is you've got supporting circuitry you know, capacitors, resistors to get the timing right and then you've got to push it onto the Arduino and then you've got to push that onto your stepper motor to turn around. So it's sort of a pretty ugly solution. We're using two Arduinos here and extra hardware. If you were going to make your own gauges for your own older style car which had all those signals coming out you could definitely go this way right? You just need the chip and the Arduino and the guy and the in the gauges and you can put them into your own car but for our purposes it's not ideal um, it's just a lot of hard work when you probably don't need to so there is another feature within SimHub which isn't turned on by default so you need to go into the um, settings of your um, SimHub Turning sorry put your wrong there it's add or remove feature and then add and remove features we want to enable custom serial devices and this will be sending out serial data from the telemetry within our game. Once you've done that, on the left hand side here we'll have this extra button called Custom Serial Devices. So the beauty of this situation with the Custom Serial Devices is it doesn't care what the device is. So it doesn't have to be an Arduino, it could be anything. Anything that receives serial data. Serial data will set, it's like Morse code, so if you remember Morse code is the beepy thing. Well it's kind of like serial data is, it's just zeros and ones and um, it's how computers talk to each other. Like what's USB? Universal serial bus. It's all communication between computer and hardware devices. It's used exclusively. So what we can do in the screen is we've got to choose the serial port for our device. And again, it could be anything. I'm using a Pi Pico because I like to torture myself and I'm programming this in the Arduino environment because I'm too lazy try and pick up on micro python or whatever Pico and Pico is using so I can choose this from my um, list of com ports here and just pick that up and there's a board rate when they communicate between um, devices it'll be it has a particular rate that it does that and board rates probably if you're old like me you'll remember it from the dial-up modem days you got it to 56k you're doing you're doing pretty good but at the moment it's 9600 we're going to turn this up and down but for testing purposes it's fine over here we've got what data we want sent from the um, SimHub software from the game we're playing so it goes from the game into the SimHub software to us here in the serial output um, to best demonstrate what's going on here we'll, we'll start a game up and here's our, um, our usual ute we start with, with BeamNG, and just so we get things side by side, I'll go back into the customer serial device and we'll just drag us. And we can see over here that the data is coming from the game. This is the revs, it probably is around about that, looking at the dial on the screen. And over here we're getting the data, this is incoming serial data. So what is happening is the data is coming out of BeamNG going to SimHub, going to uh, Arduino, or our, our Pi Pico, and it's just repeating back to SimHub. You can say, yes, my Pico is getting the data, and it's seeing it, and I can now manipulate that data to turn a motor or turn a light on it, or whatever we want. If you're following along, I do have a website, and it'll be in the show notes, and it'll have all the code for the project as we go through. So this echoing code, it will be on my um, website, jasonwinfield.nz, but again it's in the show notes, click on that, and you better cut and paste the code into your own Arduino, it doesn't have to be a Pico, it can be anything, and then test this same um, setup. For the Pico, I needed to enable RTS and DTR for some reason, I don't know why, but for Arduinos I've used, I've not had neither those things on, but it hasn't hurt to have them turned on. I was, was fluffing around for ages trying to get this to work and it was 
what was preventing me from getting any data in but anyway so if we click on this game and we rev it up you'll notice that the revs on the screen here go up and down Just translating the revs from the game into our um, sim hub here to the pico how do we get how do we choose what data we want we click on edit and there'll be two options that will come up here one will say use javascript or use ncalc just click on ncalc i'm new to this so maybe there's a better way to do it and then insert property and in here is all the telemetry from the game and there's just dozens and dozens of things that work for this game other games might have other things um, there might be telemetry just for this game and if that's the case we'll just click on this button and it gives us the option for um, much smaller things for the RPMs I just typed in RPM and it's giving us the data live it's multiple decimal points which I don't really want but I'll just show you later how to get rid of that we only want the whole number we don't want the Arduino to do any more work than it has to and perhaps we want to add the speed so we can put in speed and the speed data comes back and we can see it's um, zero because the car's not doing anything if we click on the car and do some driving we can see the speed goes up and down so perhaps we want that um, coming back to our or going out to our Arduino as well because we want a speedo gauge and we want the taco as well as boost pressure and all yep. So we've added it in there with the variable that it's supplied us with, so insert property, let's go back to the speed again. It was speed kilometers per hour, and we just put speed kmh in there with a bit of formatting around it. And now coming out the bottom we've got the raw data is the revs, and the speed it's there at the moment because we've hit a wall by the looks of things, so if we move again. We can see the speed and the revs are coming out and in, uh, in, in the incoming data which is data going to the pico we're coming back out again it's it's mapping the same to um get rid of all the extra guff we don't want there are the maths um calculations available in here and we've got insert function to do that and there's all these different things we can achieve with all the data whatever we want so i've just rounded it up to zero decimal points because i just want the whole number and we'll have to do the same for speed but it looks at things because it's coming up with fractions of numbers as well so that's half the battle won what we need to do now is try and get the motor to turn um, relative to the speed and what I tried to do is use one of these uh, one of those Chinese motors, those 21 BY or 28 BY-48, I think it is. If you're a keen viewer, you would have seen this with the cat episode. Uh, if you haven't seen that one, definitely go and watch it. And before you ask, yes, the cat came back. But it's too slow. It hasn't got the speed to turn around to match the revs of the um, of the car, especially those cars, the race cars, which whip around like this. It just it was just sort of like not really doing it very well at all. And then I tried a DC motor with an encoder on it, and it was just hunting all over the show because the, the motor was obviously designed to go fast all the time, not little steps, and it was just not enough movement. I tried to get each one of those up and down, and I wasn't getting any much, much joy out of it at all. But what I did do is I found uh, on AliExpress there's a particular stepper motor designed solely for. Um, going into the instrument clusters of cars and here it is here it's pretty cheap it's only a few dollars and its purpose is just to go into cars so it's designed to have the pace required to turn the doll around as far as the rears will go so your car at home was possibly got a motor exactly the same as this in it so what I need to do is order some of those and I did actually and they look like this tiny 
If you've made it this far, you should totally subscribe. We'll be going through a whole lot of videos setting up these gauges, and you can follow along and make them yourself. Definitely check out the link below for my website, jasonwinfield.nz, for all the code as we go along and the step by step to get these little motors up and running for our gauges. We don't just do uh, some stuff here, we do aliens and arcade machines and all sorts. So, if that sort of thing interests you, you should definitely stick around. Thanks for watching.